Welcome to the Happy Customer Channel. On this week's episode, we sit down with Sergio Rodriguez of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship and discuss building a combat sports brand. Hi, this is Dan Ariola, president of Inktel. On this episode of the Happy Customer Channel, I catch up with Sergio Rodriguez from Bare Knuckle Fighting. We talk everything about the fight game, customers, and the future of Bare Knuckle Fighting. I hope you enjoy. All right. My man, when I think of the Mount Rushmore of fight promotions, I think of Bob Arum, <laughs> wow. Dana White, Vince McMahon, and my guest today, Sergio Rodriguez. How you doing, brother? I'm well. How are you? What's going on? Excited to be here. Yeah, man. Talk to me about Bare Knuckle uh, FC, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. This was a sport that was banned in the U.S. for, what, over 100 years? Forever. How did it come to be? What Walk me through sort of... How you got involved with bare knuckle fighting? I think the way, it's probably accidental, honestly, yeah. Coinc- like pure coincidence. Um, I've been in the fight game for a while, as you know. I grew up wrestling, yeah. and I transitioned uh, once my wrestling career was over in high school. I basically wanted to stay active in something, so I found kickboxing, and then eventually jujitsu. Yeah. All right, so I was just always around fighters. And um, I'm in the apparel business. I was kind of born into it. Yeah. Uh, so I had an opportunity to make some apparel for fighters. And my passion in the sport, I, I, went, I went with it. And I was training with some of these guys and then making their apparel. And it, it really was MMA that I got into through an organization called uh, Titan FC. Mm-hmm. It's a local regional promotion that airs on uh, UFC Fight Pass. And through there, just being around the sport and just, I guess, you know, building a good reputation... I came across David Feldman, and that's really how I got into Bare Knuckle. Dave Feldman's the founder and president of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. The, the Bare Knuckle, so it's banned for 100 years, the, the, probably the oldest way of fighting. The how purest. Did you, yeah, the purest way of fighting, right? 100%. You, you think about the schoolyard. Two guys square up, yeah. they're smacking each other. Dude, how did you get it, how did you get it past the, the boxing commissions and regulated in states and so on and so forth? Well, I mean, that was, that was Dave Feldman. Right, so he he had an idea. He's been in the boxing world forever. His dad Marty was a big figure in boxing. His brother, his brother Damon, is the you know if you see celebrity boxing, Damon's usually behind it. So him and uh, Dave, Dave and his brother and his dad were always around boxing, and you know Dave stayed involved in boxing, and just like a lot of us do, you know he just kind of was a little bit turned off with what the state of boxing and what was going on with, you know. You watch boxing now; it's just you know it's not a version of what it used to be. Right. When we're growing up watching you know Mike Ta- Mike Tyson and we're watching Sugar Ray and watch Hagler and Saturday Durant. night afternoon fights. It's it amazing, was great. right? Amazing. You know, you watch it, and, and that's that's what boxing's supposed to be. Right. You know, the sweet science, unfortunately, is no longer the sweet science. So you know, back then, this was around 2009, 2010. He he basically was sitting at an event, and he just he was pretty much turned off and. You know, he just thought to himself, "There's, there's got to be something better than this, right?" So, he just he left that day, and you know, a light bulb went off in his head, and he thought, "You know, what's the purest form of fighting?" And you know, he came up with the idea of bare knuckle boxing. This episode is brought to you by Buena Vista Creative, Miami's premier digital marketing agency. Visit BuenaVistaCreative.com for more info on how Buena Vista can help your business increase revenue and create the brand and digital presence it deserves video and podcast production, web and app development, search engine and social media marketing, logo creation, outdoor, print, swag, and more. Visit BuenaVistaCreative.com to learn more. All right, so listen, I went to one of your events. I had a great time. I thought it was so cool, but I didn't really realize how different it was from boxing until I got there, right? You watch a boxing match, uh, a flyweight, or, or you know, Manny Pacquiao throw 200 punches around. This is a little different. People are sizing up, going for the kill shot. For the first-time fan going to a, a, a match, walk me through some of the, the rules, nuances, things that, that you may be overlooking. So typically it's boxing without no gloves on, right? right? You got your wrist, your wrist get wrapped, uh, and then you have five two-minute rounds of bare knuckle boxing. Uh, the real significant difference with boxing is you can you can clinch, which means you can I can you know, you can grab your opponent right. by the back of the neck and hold them there and just punch them in the face uh, as many times as you can. The only time the ref will break that up is if you stop punching and then there's, you know, just hugging going on. You know, we don't we don't want two guys just hugging in the middle of the ring. We just break it up real quick and just let them get back to punching. 
Um, so, I mean, essentially, that's that's really the big difference from, you know, when you're talking about boxing to bare knuckle boxing is no gloves and, and you're allowed to like really dirty box with a gl with a clinch. Talk to me about the sixth round. So two guys can agree to fight <laughs> one more round. Are they crazy? Right. So, I mean, it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool the way it goes down. So if 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 the fighters ruled a, a draw, the. Um, the, both fighters will have an opportunity to go to a six and six and final round, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's almost becoming where they, they really don't have a choice, so <laughs> they're, they're going to go to a six round. Right. Sudden death. The last time that happened was was actually in London, when uh, Mike Perry uh -huh. fought um, Michael Venom Page. So at the end of five rounds, it was a draw, and it was announced as a draw, and the crowd got kind of unruly, and you know they were pissed off and they were booing. Uh, and then the ring announcer, Jeff Houston, you know, comes on the mic and says, you know, after he announced the draw, he says, however, we will now go to a <laughs> six sudden death round yeah. to determine the winner of this competition. Right. So and the crowd the, goes crazy. Crowd, they yeah, go they bananas, love, you know, right. and, and as you know, the, the, the fans in London are there. I mean, those guys are they're rowdy. rowdy. Yeah, the hooligans. It's, it, it, they're all the same way. Yeah. The women, too. Men, women, children. <laughs> It is it is pretty amazing, but yeah. So the sixth round is is pretty you know pretty pretty, pretty popular. Intense. Yeah, and it's awesome. So what's the profile of a fighter? Is it is it a guy with a boxing background, Muay Thai, MMA? Like what what is typical guy that signs up to fight in bare knuckle? So you know the sport is new, obviously, right? right? Dave Dave was able to get you know his first sanctioned fight in 2018, uh, after eight years of trying, and he was finally given given the opening. You know he was. He was convinced that it was safer than boxing and MMA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they'd asked him why he thought so, and he says, you know, I just know it is, right? He was, he was able to prove it eventually, but it took him some time. Um, so what you're having now is, you know, we're fighting, we're, we, it started with finding fighters just from anywhere, right? So you, know, you have a lot of MMA fighters, mm -hmm. you have a lot of former boxers, and then you had a lot of tough guys yeah. that just, you know, the typical bar brawler <laughs> kind of guy where they come in and they're just throwing haymakers yeah. and the technique is not really there right um, but the beauty of it is that now you know 2018 to 2023 we're starting 2023 so we're almost five years in uh the sport has changed you know you're seeing a lot more technique and, and a lot of these mma fighters have refined their skills yeah. um and the boxers you know are coming in and, and making an impact because they have you know they have technique they they move different so when did you know you had something you you told me i think earlier which was Last five years, you've had forty or some some odd cards, and then on deck for the next year, you've got like fifty cards. Like, where are you at? And when did you guys go? Hey, wait a minute. There's really a business or something here. Well, I would say, I would say when the indicator that there was a business was obviously when you saw the reaction of the fans, right? I mean, casual fans, and I think you and I were talking yeah. about it. Casual fans in MMA, when you see a fight go to the floor, you get bored, right? You know, and just lose interest. Right? These fights don't go to the floor. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've had cards where there's 12 fights, there's 12 knockouts, right? You see blood, yeah. you, know, you see, you know, you, you see people laying on the floor, you know, looking up at the lights, just wondering where they are. So, and, and the craziest thing, like I told you, it's, it's proven safer than MMA. It's proven safer than boxing. So, um, but I would say that really, as far as knowing when there was, when there was a business there, yeah. it was pretty much immediate, you know, just by seeing the, the, the crowd's reaction and just selling out events. I mean, we just recently had an event in New Mexico in the same exact arena that the UFC had an event two years ago. The UFC didn't sell out. You know, BKFC sold out. Wow. The same venue. So it's just, it's been so, it's been polarizing. It's been just so fast. Um, and like I said, you, you can have, you know, fans that, that were MMA fans that have an appreciation for this. Because the reality is a good, per, a good percentage of MMA fans I hate to use the word casual, but they're more casual fans. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They 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 come on just because you know it's a brand name, right? Right, and then you know you sit around and you watch these fights, and I mean it's gotten expensive. You know, you'll see pay per view now. Super expensive, seventy five yeah, bucks, hundred bucks, seventy nine ninety nine yeah, plus taxes and crazy. fees. It comes out to eighty something bucks, but um, a, a great model. I mean, I'm right. not I'm not I'm not knocking it by any means, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just think if you're seeing the growth, you know, but, but to say when, when did, I think when was the, the sure tail sign of, yeah. of it being a business? I think if you ask Dave, um, it was probably, it was probably right out of the gate when he had his first event. Yeah. And, and it seems like sports like are falling into categories. Like I, I'm an F1 fan and I was asking someone who really follows me, hey, 
is F1 going to take out NASCAR? Are they going to take out Indy? And then they're like, no, no, no. You got to think about it like racing fans. Yeah, you may be more of an F1 fan, but right. now you may explore NASCAR, Indy. Right. I think the same thing's happening in tennis, right? You have all these people playing pickleball, paddle, like right. me on the weekends, right. right? I don't care about tennis, but now I'm starting to watch tennis because right. like what's the best? And you sort of follow, I think a little bit with, with combat sports in general, right? Like I still follow boxing, MMA, but then now I'm starting to follow yours and it's just kind of like this... I'll, I'll, I'll Weird tell you, mix of just great fighting. I'll tell you something crazy that just happened to me recently. I'm I'm an avid MMA fan. Right, right, right. I, right. I mean, we, we know, you know, you know this. <laughs> I just I was in New Mexico, at PKOC yeah. uh, Knucklemania three. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's the one that it was a, another sold out crowd. As is pretty much every event, every BKFC event is being sold out. Um, but I got home uh, Saturday, and I had some stuff to do Saturday, so uh, not much there. But Sunday there was nothing on TV. And I hadn't watched the UFC from Saturday night, right? So by the time I got home, it was over. Yeah. So I was lying on the couch and I put on the UFC, all right? And I'm, I'm just telling you this from my point of view. Right. And I'm not a casual fan by any means. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was a little bit bored watching, watching the UFC event. You know, I, was, I, I caught myself, like, not really paying attention half the time. Uh-huh. You know, and, and when you're talking about BKFC, you're sitting there and you, just, you have to you pay have attention. Because yeah, it, it could end that quick, right? Yeah, so, that was my takeaway from it. I was yeah. like, wait, and there's guys sizing up. And it's almost like a chess match in that uh, you want to save your hands, right? Because, the, because you can right. break your you gotta hand. Pick your, you got to pick you, your shots. You yeah. got to pick your shots, and if you overshoot, you oh, open yeah. yourself up. I mean, just it, it, you, you, you got to, you got to definitely be precise. Right. And you got to land your punches right. And I think you and I were talking about it before. Yeah. With bare knuckle, you could sit right now, and I can have you punch the wall right. a bunch of times, and, and punch it pretty hard, and you'll feel it, but it's not going to hurt you, right? Right. You, you miss that punch a little bit, and you're going to feel it, right? Right. Right. And it's the same thing on a face. You know, now on a face, it's not a flat surface. You right. know, you got a nose, you got, you know, you got the side of the head, you got the chin. Yeah. If you land it flush, you're good. But the majority of these guys are ending up, you know, they, they have a little bit of, they come out sore, their hands, yeah. right? Some of them come out with a lot of damage on their face. You know, so the fighters that come through, like, I don't, I, I don't know if you know Luis Baboon Palomino. Yeah. He's the tougher, you know, yeah. pound for pound best fighter in BKFC in the history of the sport. He's a big face for the promotion. You know, if you look at him come out of his fights, he usually does not have any damage on his face. Now, his hands get a little bit banged up because <laughs> right. he lands a lot of punches, yeah. but he just has real good boxing, real good head movement, so he doesn't get hit a lot. But, you know, you look at him, and you look at his face, like, doesn't look like he got in a fight. You look at his hands, and you can tell he got in a it's fight. It's a mess, right. Yeah. And, you know, like I tell people, I said, and I think we were talking about yeah. this uh, while we are having lunch, um, and it, it comes down to something real simple, right? And, and the sport of bare knuckle. If, you, if you're talking about bare knuckle and MMA, mm-hmm. right? And MMA, if we ask, if we poll 10 people right. that actually watch MMA, maybe don't even watch MMA, but they know what MMA is, UFC is. You ask them what, what a Kimura is, they're not going to know. You know, right. it's a submission, right. right? You ask them what a punch in the face is, and, and they'll know. They'll right? know in two seconds. So right. they can relate to it. You know, yeah. pretty much everybody that you know has been into a fight at some point in their life, whether they were in third grade or they were in, you know, high school, yeah. right? And, and like I tell everybody, I said, if, if even with wrestling, you know, I wrestled. If, if in wrestling, you and I were going to have a wrestling yeah. match, uh, you know, hey, Danny and Serge are wrestling today right. after, after school, you know, as part of the school's wrestling team, not too many people are going to come. Right. You tell them Danny and Serge are going to go fight at Tropical Park. Everyone's going to go watch. Everybody's coming. People yeah. from other schools are right. coming, right? right? It's just, <laughs> right. And they don't even have to know you. And they don't even have to know you, but right. they just want to see somebody get beat up, right? right. So, you know, that's... That's the beauty of what of what bare knuckle boxing is, right? And that's why it's growing so fast. And and it is the fastest growing sport. It's the fastest growing combat sport. Yeah, right it's now. it's crazy. So I went to your, your event, you know, less than two years ago, and then it just seems like I see it everywhere now. You have millions of followers on social media. Yeah, walk me through just the, the engagement because I remember looking back, like on UFC, and you know, everybody knows the, the business case, right? Where they buy it from, you know, pretty much bankruptcy. They built up this right. great brand. But I think one of the things was, as UFC was coming up, the internet was coming up, right? And so, yep. like, all these fans that had nowhere to go now had blogs, yep. and they had chat rooms, and they just sort of got this cult following, and then, obviously, the, the TV show, and then the, 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 the thing went crazy. How do you guys engage clients and, and so, you know, social media and, 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 and this fans, uh, fan base that you've built up? I mean, you, you nailed it. On, on like today's world that we're living in, everything is basically driven by social media, yeah. um, and it's all about content. I mean, you can you have people just sitting on their phones all day, you know, watching TikTok videos, making TikTok videos, whatever it may be. You know, with bare knuckle, I think, you know, like anything else, anything that's that's 
brings blood or that or that just some people are like yeah. when they're talking about it they're talking about it good they speak about they they can speak of it poorly but at the end of the day as long as they're talking about it it's great right so in this in the world of BKFC obviously the social media aspect has helped tremendously right. it's you know br you, all it is bringing eyes to the sport and the way you do that obviously is by bringing on names that have been involved in combat sports one way or another a big you know, and I think Dave will tell you, like, if you ask him, and he's, he's answered the question, his, his Mount Rushmore of BKFC fighters, mm -hmm. he puts Paige Van Zandt on there. Now, Paige Van Zandt hasn't won a fight in BKFC. <laughs> right. But she was a UFC fighter, right. pretty girl, with a huge social media footprint. Right. Uh, she came on and fought for BKFC, right? The amount of eyeballs that she brought. If you look at her subscription model for OnlyFans, mm -hmm. I mean, she's, the girl's making a ton of money. More than she did fighting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then she makes more money in one fight of BKFC than she probably made her whole career fighting for UFC, you know, as far as yeah. her purse is, it comes to her purse, right? So, you know, things like that, that's how you bring eyeballs, right? We had Chad Mendes fight. Chad mm -hmm. Mendes fought uh, in a Miami card here, and he, he won. But, you know, that guy, he's a guy that came over. He had a huge following in BKFC, I mean, in UFC, sorry. He was a huge name. So, you know, when those those guys come over and yeah. then you start having, you know, right now we had uh, Austin Trout fight against Diego Sanchez. Diego Sanchez was a huge figure in, in the UFC, right? Now he fought for us in New Mexico against Austin Trout. Austin Trout's a world-class boxer. Came over and, you know, it was kind of cool because you get to see a, a, a true MMA fighter right. fight a true boxer in Bare knuckle. Right. Obviously, it, it was cool to see because everybody wonders. You know, you're always wondering how will an MMA guy do against yeah, a boxer. Right. We've seen it, but you saw it. You know, you saw Floyd against Mayweather. Right. I mean, sorry, my bad. Connor against Connor, Mayweather. Yeah, sure. You're right. So you know that was a little bit un uneven. You know, we all kind of knew where that was going. Um, and and with Trout and Diego Sanchez, uh, Diego. I mean, you can't hit what you can't what you can't see. You can't hit yeah. what's not in front of you. And Trout was never in front of him. You know, he was just. And these are guys with huge followings. Huge right? followings. And that's yeah. how you get you, you you bring them on board. Yeah. Gets the engagement going, and it's right. just flywheel effect. Uh, how how do I watch bare knuckle? Like, do, do you do pay per views? How, no. How does it work? So right now there's a subscription model. Uh -huh. So BKFC, there's a an app. Yeah. It's the BKFC TV app. So you just go go on your phone or your smart TV. You download it. You pay right now. I think the subscription is seven ninety nine a month. Okay, and it gives you access to the entire library, and you don't you don't have to pay per fight. You just pay per month, and it just gives you access to all the fights, which which actually you you brought you brought this up earlier. Um, I think BKFC we're on our fifty second event. Okay, right through since two thousand eighteen and. I think the plan for 2023 is to have 40 events, 40 plus events. Wow, that's so that's, that's you see the growth and the demand for the sport, right? Yeah. So it's there. The fans want it. Like, you know, people are asking us to go to different states. Dave is doing a great job of opening up states. Mm -hmm. You know, every it almost seems like there's How a new state you guys opening up. Because um, you started in the Indian reservations, right, and then for, kind yeah. of branched out a the, little bit. Yeah, the first fight was actually on Indian ground. It was in right. Cheyenne, Wyoming, 2018. Okay. So. Dave got approved April 2018, and the first fight was in Wyoming, June 2018. Wow, amazing! Yeah, in the square. What do you guys call it? The, the square, square circle. Square, square circle. Yeah. That's right. It's 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 a square. It's it's a square platform, yeah. and then the ring is circular. Yeah, it's it's. it's and and cool what ring. most people don't know, and and I tell this to a lot of fighters when they're first going to fight for BKFC, our ropes have no give. So when you okay. when you go against the rope, it's like hitting a wall. You're not bouncing off. You're yeah. just. You're kind of stuck, and then once you're there, and it's it's smaller than a traditional boxing ring. It, no, it's 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 actually since it's round, right. you know, it's pretty big, and there's no corners. Right. So it's the the cool thing is it's hard to catch a guy in a corner. Yeah. But that's the the beauty of the clinch is you make your own corner basically. You know, you you grab the guy, you put your your hand or you know you grab him by yeah. the back of the neck, and you just you're, can't you move. Have at it. Yeah, that's your that's your corner, that's right? Amazing. So, yeah, but no, it's it's a it's there's there's a lot of room, but the cool thing about about bare knuckle, you know, BKFC is you start in the middle of the ring. You know, yeah. every everywhere else, UFC, boxing, you're like you're right. You're in, in your corners. corners. Yeah. Here, there's you got to have your foot on the line, and that's why it's called toe the line. So the ref will tell you toe the line, and mm -hmm. then when it's time to go, he'll say knuckle up, and you just go. So on, on a card like that, let's say a main card, first fight to main event, what, what kind of fighter make? Ballpark. I mean, it depends. You have some fighters that are making, um, you know. Three, four, five thousand dollars, six thousand dollars, and then you know you have a guy that can come in and make 
five hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Just depends on the name and, yes. the, and the following. Because right. again, at, at the end of the day, and, and we just we touched on that earlier, it's all about getting eyeballs. Yeah. You know, and right now we're working. You know, we definitely want to bring all the fight fans. Yeah, you're building but, the awareness, but, right? And, yeah. But we want this to go. We want it to be a household name. We want everybody, just not fight fans. You know, we want to make fight fans out of basketball fans, yeah. out of football fans. So you know, we're working with with football players, we're working with basketball players. We're trying to bring them to the fights. Yeah. You know, when they come to a fight, they're actually there's a picture of Shaquille O'Neal at our last, you know, yeah, the, the, that, the last yeah. fight in Miami, and you know, his his mouth is open, and he just, you know, you could tell he's in amazement. And you know, he'd been to fights before, yeah. but you know, it's still you still have that shock value still. Right? Like, totally. no matter how many times you watch the fight, how yeah. many times you've been to a fight, you know, there's still shock value because you know what the show these these guys and girls put on is amazing. And I will tell you, the girl fights are usually more savage than the guy <laughs> fights, which is amazing. These girls throw it down, and they get bloody and you know they they don't they have no stop. You know they don't. They, they always go for pace, the sixth round. That's it. They, well, no, they try to end it in the first <laughs> they try round. Trying to end it in the it's first round. Amazing, but um, so yeah, man. I mean, it's just it's it's that exciting, and we're just trying to bring as many eyeballs to it as possible. Nice. Talk to me about your typical you know customer, your viewer. What's the profile? Who 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 watches it? Who's your core raving fan? As is, as typical with combat sports, yeah. I mean, you're gonna have males. You know, yeah. predominantly eighteen to fifty years old. Um, we found a direct link with, you know, you, it's crazy, but music, right? So, really? yeah, usually guys that watch Bare Knuckle tend to like more like, you know, hardcore metal music, you know, hard rock. Wow, what a surprise. Right. <laughs> yeah, what a surprise. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're, we're working to change that, and we are. You know, yeah. and it's like, you know, we talked about it. We talk about UFC a lot, yeah. you know, the comparisons, because that's what we have to go, th that's what we have to go by, right? Yeah. Obviously, the UFC... And Dave will say it. The UFC made his life easier, yeah. you know, because the fact remains, they they went through a lot of the the nuances that right. that Dave's going through now, or that he's gone through, right? So, you know, when you look at what we're trying to do, we're trying to change the scope of it. But at the end of the day, you know, we know that our core fan is always going to be predominantly males, right? And it's going to be in that age group, eighteen to fifty years old, yeah. right? right. Um, we we don't we don't expect to really change that. You know, the UFC hasn't changed yeah. that. You know, you have a lot of women watching the sport, and that's. Because you have women fighters, but not only that, because you know when when a guy's watching, you know typically you have yeah. girls in the house, and then it's hard not to watch, right? Yeah. If there's a fight going on, it usually usually get engaged, right? Yeah. And you and then once you start watching, you know you, you might not be glued to the TV if if you don't like what you see, but most of the time, you'll you know something will it will it's intriguing, right? Yeah, you want to yeah. see what's going on. It's like a, almost like a train wreck when <laughs> you almost can't look away. But you know all we're trying to do is we're not trying to change. Our viewers, we're trying to increase our viewers, right? right? So, uh, and we've we've actually done a great job, you know, and it's going to continue in that direction. I mean, our trajectory, if you put BKFC and UFC on like on a on a trajectory yeah. scale, and you see what they did over their first ten years and what BKFC's done in its mm -hmm. first uh, going into five years, yeah. you know, we're outpacing them, right? Wow. Which which is exciting. Now you, you you touched a little bit on working with the commission, but you also said that it's it's a, it's safer, right, than it's, traditional yeah. boxing and right. MMA. Walk me through. So when some of that. when you know Dave Dave had been around the sport for a long time, right? So he knew, you know, he knows what what boxing what boxing is. He knows what MMA is, and in his mind, he just he knew that it was BKFC would be a safer sport than boxing and MMA. And I mean, in his mind, the way he his rationale was. You know, with boxing, you, you know, you have soft pillows on your hands, right? right? So I can punch you as hard as I want, and you're having, you know, it depends on the level of boxing you're at. But, you know, you can typically, at the pro level, you're looking at 10, you know, 10 rounds on yeah. average, 10 to 12 right. rounds of boxing. Um, and the amount of time, I can punch you as hard as I want, as many times as I want, and guess what? My hands are pretty much very well protected. Right. Your face and your brain are not, right? right? So repeated blows to the head with that much force, I mean... There's trauma, yeah. right? It's it's impossible to avoid it, and you know you you think that just about every fighter that comes out of a boxing match, um, and usually both of them have you know the chances of concussion are high, right? right. And you know, we know what concussions, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know repeated concussions lead to, right. right? And over a fighter's career, you know multiple concussions, right? So um, then you start talking about CTE, and mm -hmm. and that's a real bad word, and um, you know you want to you know that's just the reality of the sport. Right. You're not right. gonna get away from it, right? So and the same happens in football, right? Yeah. And it happens in soccer, right? So hitting concussions the are there, right? So all you do is you find ways to make the, the sport safer. With MMA, I mean, 
listen, I, you've seen MMA fights where a guy takes a kick or a knee or an elbow to the head, you know, and, and that's... force running. For, yeah, yeah, thousand percent, right? So, um, you know, you take, a, you take a tibia to the side of the head, <laughs> and it's like taking a baseball bat, right? right? right it's equivalent right. to it. So, you know, he just, he, in his mind, and when he thought about it, he said, well, you know what? I have no, you have nothing on your hands, right? right? And in most, in most, like, fights, like street fights, you end up breaking your hands, right? Right, because... You're punching somebody as hard as you can, yeah. and you're not measuring your punches. You just want it to end. Uh, here, you know, you have, you know, granted, it's only five rounds. Yeah. You have no protection on your hands. You got to measure your punches. <laughs> you got to be selective with your punches. Yeah. Um, most of the damage in our fights are superficial. You know, might have there been definitely guys that had their bell rung and yeah. get knocked out, and yeah, they get sus- you know they get a medical suspension, 30, 60, 90 days, just you know for safety mm-hmm. reasons. But you know, we definitely put the fighter safety first, right? And you know, referees are trained to to look for for signs of you know a guy's health, you know, maybe yeah. in jeopardy, and you know we we stop fights a lot, right? You know, a guy gets an you know gets a standing eight count. You know, yeah. if you take a knee, you know, there's there's other things in boxing yeah. in, in, in this sport that that other sports don't have, right? If you feel you're in danger, you, you want the crazy thing is you can almost call a timeout on yourself. If you take a knee. Really? You automatically get a standing eight count. Now, what happens is you take a knee. You take a, it's like a, a point, knockdown. Right. That r- that round is automatically ten eight unless you then knock out right. or knock down your yeah. opponent. Then it levels the playing field, and then it goes to the judges. But you know, there's there's a lot of things that that are done in BKFC with the fighter safety first, mm-hmm. um, and and all of it comes to comes from really the way the referees are trained, yeah, and and then the way the the fight is called. But I mean, definitely, the whole point that Feldman had when he was coming up with this sport and and he just was yelling to anybody that would hear that it's safer than MMA and boxing. You know, and at first they, they're they like, how do you know? You know, right, he right, would just right. say, well, I just, I just know it is. Yeah. And it, it wasn't until he was able to do his first fight in 2018 and then do subsequent fights after that where he got independent doctors involved and then they, they proved his theory. And, you it's know, it's, and it'll, it'll help broaden the audience, right? It People will. think it's a yeah. little safer... Right. Just like UFC, right? The, 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 you had the old days of Senator McCain going, it's cockfighting, and then yeah, and then right. he became a fan, right? Yeah, it's like, of course. Uh, it's, it's hard not to. It's hard not to. So it's not... With that, like, where do you see the sport in 10 years from now? I mean, I I really... And I, I don't say this just because I'm I'm good friends yeah. with Dave or that I'm yeah. involved in BK. I, it's, I'm saying it, and I mean it. Just I see the trajectory of where this is going. Um you know, I, I'm not going to say it's going to put UFC out of business, right? Sure. Because UFC is an amazing platform, and they're they're doing great. And they're they're, you know, when when Dana and the and Fertitas, when they sold it, <laughs> yeah. it was valued at four billion. That's right. what they sold it at. Yeah. It's valued at I think over ten billion right. now. It's so crazy. It's not slowing down. Yeah. Now I think in ten years, BKFC will very likely be in ten years from now where where UFC is today. Wow, that's yeah. impressive, man. And I, and I have no, I really have no doubt. Just. Is there is there a, a country that it's bigger in? Is it a U.S. heavily U.S. or and by the way, is it regulated globally? Like what, so, what are the rules? No. So right now, you know, the U.S. is obviously the biggest market. Yeah. Um, there's been we've done a couple of fights in Thailand. Okay. Now, I, obviously, Thailand is is heavy on Muay Thai. Yeah. Right. Uh, but there's a huge fan base, mm-hmm. you know, for for bare knuckle, basically in any country that that we speak to. There was plans for Russia, but then you know, obviously yeah, that, that all, all all that got held up. Uh, but the plans, the, definitely the plans to grow. I mean, we're doing everything that needs to be done to grow this globally, right? Yeah. And then you know, we we get calls from all over the world where we want to bring this over. Mm-hmm. We want to bring this over. You know, we've had calls from the anywhere from the Middle East to Mexico to Colombia to Peru. You know, so we're definitely exploring all those markets, right? And that's one of the things that that I will help out in doing. You know, I, I got it. I already got approved in the Dominican Republic. Right. Obviously, you know my roots yeah. with the Dominican Republic and my relationship yeah. there. And um, you know, I'm one of the ones that really was yeah. in charge of taking MMA there. So now I want to take bare knuckle there. Puerto Rico is another huge market, mm-hmm. and we know there's going to be a bright future in Puerto Rico. You have great fighters out of Puerto Rico. Right. You know, Puerto Rico is a boxing mecca, right? right. So. That's that's we're gonna be in Puerto Rico before long, um, and we're just gonna keep expanding. You know, definitely Mexico mm-hmm. is on the map. You know, there's the map is you know our our course of action like for the next yeah. ten years is not only grow it here in the U.S., which it's gonna grow exponentially, but you know you think about the growth you have globally. Yeah, and I mean, 
it's it was once you get it approved in the U.S., it's a lot easier to approve it everywhere else because now you have data and right. you have you know medical evidence and yeah. you know we have a whole deck on safety. Yeah, and the U.S. has just regulations. These other places, no, who yeah. knows? <laughs> and you pay somebody and, off, and you can. And it's you, not even it's not even that difficult. It's honestly. not even. Yeah, right. I mean. You know, so yeah, there. That's why when I say in the next ten years, and I'm not saying we're going to be bigger than the UFC. I think in ten years we'll be where the UFC is today. All right, man. I can't let you go without some rapid fire questions. You ready? Right. I'm You're ready. in the hot seat. Let's one, do man. it. I'm ready. All right. Better promoter, Dana White or Vince McMahon? I'll say Dana White. Dana White. Okay. Yeah. Godfather one or Godfather two? One. Uh, are we ever going to see John Jones and um, uh, Frank and uh, Lingano fight? No, I don't. I don't believe. Why? I just think they're they're going in different directions, and I, you know who knows what Francis is really wanting to do with his life. Right. I mean, he states that he was trying to, you know, be a I boxer. Guess, yeah, well, be the hero of the UFC, and yeah. he was only <laughs> going to fight if they met all his demands. And Dana White doesn't meet anybody's demands except yeah. you know his own or what's best for the for his you know for the UFC. Yeah. So, uh, John Jones is set to fight you know Cyril Gane very soon. Right. It's going to be a super fight. I think John Jones you know will win it. Yeah, pretty easily. But, yeah, I think Francis is – I don't know what he's going to do. I mean, he says he wants to fight Tyson Fury or God knows what. I, it's going to be a tough day in for, the office. For the fight fans, I, want to see, I think fight fans want to see it, but you're right. I, I don't know if it happens. Yeah. Unfortunately, I would love to see it. I would love it, to see 100%. it. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would have been that'd be that'd be the match. That, you know, that would be, be the mega match. Of, yeah, that yeah, that's the one, one that you know, everybody was always sizing yeah. up. Yeah. Unfo- I don't think we will, unfortunately. That's crazy. May, uh, maybe in bait, maybe one day we'll see it in BKFC. Maybe. We- <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Does Khabib ever come back? No. No, why? Uh, he's you know Khabib did what he had to do, and I, you know I know I know yeah, yeah. I know his I know his camp pretty yeah. well, and you know you hear the inside story, and it really does make sense. You know Khabib was passionate about fighting because of his dad. Um, he's a family guy now, so he had stepped away as a fighter because he didn't want to do it without yeah. his dad in his corner. Um, but the reality is, as a coach and as a manager, he was probably spending like he says more time in the gym and on the road than he did as a fighter. Because when he was a fighter, he worried about himself. Yeah. You know, as a coach and a manager, you have several guys under you and you need to be there for all your guys, right? So it, it made it even more more time on the road, more time away from the family. Yeah. And, you know, he's a family guy with family values. So, yeah, you know. You think he's done? Yeah, I believe he's done. All right, one more question. How much of the success of BKFC is from luck and how much of it is from the grind? All right, so I, I'll, I'll start off by saying I – don't believe in luck. Okay. I, I mean, I believe sure. you make your own luck, right? right? So 1,000% grind, right? And I, I've been I've been around Dave Feldman a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen what he goes through. I, th- You know, I see the work that he puts in. You know, this guy does not stop. It's relentless. I mean, it's a nonstop grind, right? So, uh, yeah, 100% grind. Good stuff. 100%. My man, where can fans watch uh, BKFC, uh, the subscription, all, all, all the different uh, venues that we can – See it. Do you have any upcoming events? Where can fans follow you? So, um, BKFC yeah. TV app. Okay. Uh, just go through and just on the app store, just put Bare Knuckle. Yeah. You can put BKFC or Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, and you'll see it come up. And you'll see the logo. It's, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's seven dollars and ninety nine cents a month. It gives you access to every fight, every event, uh, library of past fights, okay. um, some behind the scenes stuff. You know, and and uh, it's a pretty complete app. It's very, very user-friendly. So uh, upcoming events, March 17th at uh, Delray Tennis Center, Delray yep. Beach Tennis Center. It's a first. It's actually pretty cool. It's our first outdoor event. Very cool. So that's coming up. Uh, good, great fights on that card as, as on every card. Uh, before that, we have March 4th in London. Mm-hmm. That's this weekend. Um, so March 4th, London. March 17th, Delray Beach. March 24th, we go to Virginia. There's like, th- I think, three title fights on that card. Okay. Uh, and then just it just continues. Colorado's April twenty. I want to say April twenty fourth. I don't have my. I don't have the calendar. That's in front amazing, of me, man. How many? Uh, you know, like when I talked talk to you two years ago, it was like, yeah, one, and then we'll have one right. in, uh, next quarter. Yeah, no, it's yeah. now it's it's not no, it's now it's it's gonna it's gonna get to the point where we're close to every weekend. Good stuff. All right, amigo. Thanks for coming on the I show. I wish me. you BKFC a ton of success. Thank you, sir. All right, man. Later. Likewise.